Sugar is killing you and your brain. When was the last time you were hungry or craving something sweet and sad? You know what? I'm not going to eat. I'm going to diet. I'm going to fast. Be honest. And let me tell you this. What if what you're experiencing then isn't actual hunger? What if what you're experiencing is addiction? With Chinese New Year's is around the corner, it's time for celebration, family gatherings, and of course, a wide variety of delicious treats. From sweet rice cake to sugary pastries, it's hard to resist the festival sweets that fill our tables. However, with all this indulgence come the reminder of the impact of sugar on your health. I know it's easy to say don't eat sugary food. For example, my boyfriend loves sweets because as a child, his father could sneak candies into his school uniform. For him, sweets become a symbol of his father's love. Similarly, his love for desserts comes from his family dinners, where dessert was always the grand finale, a tradition his father insists upon. Even though he knows that sweets aren't the best of his health, he struggles to let go. This connection between the sweets and happiness isn't just his story. Many of us share it. Even those who say they don't have a sweet tooth often find themselves adding fruits or granola to their yogurts. Sugar in all its form tied to moments of joy, celebrations, family gatherings, milestones. It activates our dopamine receptors, give us that instant rush of happiness. But as humans, we often learn the hard way don't we? I believe there are three legal drugs in the world. First one is alcohol, second one is cigarette, and the third one, you guess it, sugar. And sugar being the worst one. Sugar has been a silent killer for decades, hiding in plain sight, with its harmful effect right in front of us. Yet, we've continued to ignore the severity of its impact. For perspective, alcohol is linked to about 3 million deaths annually around the globe, while tobacco is related to 8 million deaths per year globally. And sugar, while it's difficult to give a precise number for how many people are directly affected by sugar intake, because virtually everyone consumes sugar to some extent. We know that sugar is the main driver for many diseases such as diabetes type 2, obesity, and cardiovascular diseases. The American Heart Association estimated that CVD is the leading cause of death worldwide with approximately 18 million deaths per year globally, and type 2 diabetes being responsible for 1.5 million deaths per year globally. And according to the World Health Organization, over 650 million people are classified as obese with high sugar diet being the key driver to their obesity. I mean, there are over 200,000 deaths per year just from overconsumption of sugary drinks. Isn't that crazy? Now, you've probably heard how glucose impacts your physical health, with its link to conditions like diabetes, heart disease, and even cancer. But what about your brain? Have you ever considered how fluctuations in glucose level might be affecting your mental clarity, focus, or memory? The next time you find yourself forgetting things or battling that, take a moment to think. Glucose could be playing a bigger role than you realize. You look up attention deficit disorder, they talk about hereditary, they talk about environmental factors, but they don't ever even mention the word sugar. It's not just your body that feels the effect. Your mind is deeply connected to what's happening in your bloodstream. Let me break it down for you. Your brain is like a bustling city. Each neuron is a car, moving information from one part to the city to another. The fuel, glucose. But what happens when the fuel becomes too much or too little? Traffic jams, energy blackouts. The city slows down. Now apply this to your brain and you get the point. You've got a recipe for accelerated aging and neurodegenerative diseases. A recent study from Stanford has uncovered a game-changing link between sugar and brain aging that might just redefine how we think about protecting our mind as we grow older. Researchers took a close look at how aging brings use glucose and the findings were nothing short of groundbreaking. They focused on neural stem cells. These are the cells in your brain that are responsible for creating new neurons. Think of them as the brain's repair crew. 
In older brains, these neural stem cells start to consume less glucose. At first glance, you might think that that's bad news. After all, glucose is the energy source, right? But the study found that this reduced glucose consumption actually triggers something remarkable, an increase in neurogenesis or the creation of a new neuron. It shows that high glucose level in aging brains can suppress the function of neural stem cells. These cells stop regenerating effectively when they're overwhelmed with too much energy. It's like giving a small engine too much fuel. It splutters and stalls. The researchers test this theory on aging mice. They manipulated the glucose level in the neural stem cells of these mice. And by limiting the glucose uptake, they essentially reawakened the brain ability to produce new neurons. In practical terms, they found a new way to rejuvenating an aging brain. Your brain is a garden. If you flood it with water, the plants drown. But just the right amount, boom, flowers everywhere. This is what happens when glucose is managed correctly in your brain. Too much or too little, the balance is lost. By reducing glucose level, the researchers observed a significantly uptake in the production of the new neurons in older brains. This finding challenges the traditional ideas that more energy is always better. Instead, it highlights the importance of metabolic balance in maintaining brain health as we age. So it's not about how you want to die, it's about how you want to live. To take control over your life, do you want to live life with a brain fog, stumbling like an accident, and just getting by? Or do you want to wake up in a scenario where you're empowered to be fully present and live out your full potential? If you can't control what you put into your body, then what can you really control? The food that you consume doesn't just affect your waistline, it's simply tied to how well your brain age, mental fog, memory issues, even diseases like Alzheimer's. So what can you do right now? Start small. Consider reducing sugar intake or food that turns into sugar very quickly like refined carbs, starches, or bread. Try a low carb diet. Never eat sweet things on an empty stomach because that will cause the glucose spike. Eat dessert only after your meal as food will slow down sugar absorption. Always eat your starch with protein or fiber and move around for at least 10 minutes. Like going for a walk within two hours of your eating. Try this for a week and see how you feel. If you found this eye-opening, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more tips on living your healthiest life. Until next time!